Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox on Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be looking at backup solutions. Now, depending on what sort of thing you want to back up on your system, whether you want to back up maybe just a small folder, which has got really important data, such as your finances or tax returns, that sort of thing. Maybe you want to back up uh, larger sections, maybe your game library, or you just want to back up the whole drive and keep it somewhere safe. Then there's various ways that you can actually achieve this and various pieces of software you, you can actually choose to use it, whether they be free or whether they be paid. Those choices are ultimately going to be down to you. Now, I've been looking at some software from a company which I actually struggle to pronounce the name. I think it's Aome, but you let me know in the comment section. Please let me know phonetically if that's right or wrong. I would appreciate it. But for a long time now, I've noticed their software and it keeps on popping up on searches when I'm looking for free software to do backups and cloning and that kind of stuff. So I thought, well, what the heck, let's give it a try. The interface looks very clean and simple and it actually seems to be quite positive comments about it as you look through reviews on the internet. So I figured I would take a closer look. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I'm going to back up my video streaming system, which is behind me. Now it's actually got quite a large drive in there. It's a two terabyte MVV drive and there's a lot of stuff on there and I quite like to back it up just in case I install some software for doing some demonstrations and maybe something goes completely pear-shaped. It's very rare that it happens but occasionally it does or maybe just a Windows update completely borks the system. It's really nice to have a backup on hand so you can restore. Now I do actually have a NAS machine which I actually do back up to daily as well but sometimes you never know that might go wrong or maybe you don't have a NAS. So I figured it'd be a good idea to have a look at using some drives that I've got knocking around. So I've got options for a traditional hard disk drive. This is a four terabyte one, which actually was in a NAS, which has been decommissioned. This kind of thing is absolutely perfect. If you've got drives like this knocking around, you can get a very cheap and effective USB adapter, plug it into your system, create your backups, disconnect the drive, keep it somewhere safe just in case the worst should happen. Alternatively, if you want something a little bit more swish, then you can use something like this. So this is from a company called Oroco. Loads of these types of devices around from various manufacturers. This one I actually like because it's got quite a fast USB connection, either USB-C or standard USB. And inside of that, you can put an NVMe drive. So you can use a kind of slightly older, slower drive, or you can use one of the newer, faster drives on the market. Also, this one is four terabytes, so I can do multiple backups onto the same disk or drive and not have to worry about it kind of overwriting previous ones. I can do incremental backups, and also I can do individual file syncs as well, which actually can make life easier if maybe you don't want to restore the entire system, you just want to restore some files, this potentially is the way to go. So with all that said, let's take a look at the IMA Backupper software. This is the free edition. You can, if you want to, upgrade to the pro edition, and actually it might be even something that you might consider because no matter what you seem to do, whenever you try to come out of the software, there's a nag bear that pops up and offers you some absolutely ridiculous discounts on the software. So if you are using it, or maybe you, you watch this video and you think, actually, I quite like the look of that, maybe try the free version, then if you like it, then you can pay for the full version. Now, I will actually try to get hold of the company that make this software and see if they can do some sort of discount for Mike's unboxing viewers. If that is the case, and I'm not guaranteeing it will be, if that is the case, look out in the video description below, and if there is anything, I will put either links or discount codes if they are available. Anyway, with all that said, let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. Okay, so for those of you that haven't installed the software already or haven't seen it, so you can go over to the uh, AME software site and look at backup products. They also do loads of utilities and all that kind of stuff, so you can have a good nose through should you wish to. The one we're going to be looking at is the Backupper Standard. So if you go up to Backup Products, go to AME Backupper, and for the Home Edition, you've got the AME Backupper Standard Free Edition. You can click on the download button there. It's actually a very small download, so you can download it to your system, install it. Uh, that's all good. Obviously, it goes through and tells you what is available to you. So you've got easy backups. You can do safe cloning for your system, automatic synchronization. So things like OneDrive, if you like the idea of OneDrive, but you don't want to have a Microsoft service, then this might be absolutely perfect. And again, you can synchronize this to hard drives, network shares, NAS drives, or even cloud services. Those choices are entirely up to you. So if you go down, it gives you some ideas of pricing. So the standard version is free is obviously reduced and it's freeware. If you want to go for the professional license, $39.95 and the workstation versions, $49.95. Now again, I would absolutely disregard these prices because more often than not, there's going to be one of these flash sales going on at the moment. There's 80% off. If you click on there, you can get a substantial discount. They also do, for those of you that don't like subscriptions, they do lifetime licenses. Now that is something which I'm actually genuinely interested in 
as we are moving away from our Synology NAS and going over to Ugreen, Ugreen at the moment doesn't have a really good backup solution for doing incrementals and multiple systems at the same time. So I'm very tempted to go for this anyway, for the lifetime five license version of this software, which will give me all the flexibility that I actually need. But for a lot of people, just doing a simple backup is gonna be fine. If you look at here, you can see what backups you can do. So you can do file backup, system backup, disk backup, and partition backup. So that is the same in all versions. Also, you've got your automatics, your incrementals, which are the best ones to do because they don't take much time. And also you can do sector by sector if you want that security. Also, you can do backup to local disk, external disk, USB flash drives, network NAS, cloud drives, and even CDs and DVDs. If Matthew Day is watching, there you go, one for you. Also, you can do dynamic disks and you can split images, USB triggered events, all that kind of stuff. So there you go, that is what you can do. With regard to syncing, you can do basic sync, sync deletions, mirror syncs, etc. Although actually mirror sync is for the professional and workstation versions, so ignore that. When it comes to restore, obviously the restore is going to be pretty much the same as the other stuff, so you can restore as you would normally, file restore, system restore, disk restore, and partition restore. When it comes to cloning, unfortunately cloning, even though it says here partition clone, don't be misled. That isn't going to do a disk so it'll do a disk partition but not an entire disk so if you just want to back up or clone a partition which maybe for instance let me clarify that so say for instance on my system i've got a c drive a d drive and an e drive c drive is for windows d drive is for games e drive is for video stuff so say for instance i want to back up or clone my d drive my games partition i can do that to another drive but if i want to do the whole system i can't that is with the free version. If you go for the professional versions, obviously that opens up all the other options as well. Uh, also there's tools built in. We'll go through some of this as we go through the software itself. So you've got the recovery environments and that kind of stuff, which actually is crossed out there, but there is actually a recovery kind of environment which you can trigger from the software, even if you don't pay for it. So anyway, with that said, let's close that down and we'll take a look at the backup or software and you'll get the user account control because obviously it's a system level thing and it's got a nice clean interface. I really do like this. There is a lot of nagware, but it's a free piece of software. So you kind of expect that. So first of all, on your homepage, you've got the choice for creating a new backup or creating a new sync. We'll take a look at those shortly in backup. So the options you can use are the ones which don't say pro next to them unless you buy a license. So we can do, like we said, a system backup, a disk backup, partition backup or a file backup. Other ones you can't at the moment until you've paid for the software. When it comes to synchronization, there's just the basic sync option, which for a lot of people is gonna be absolutely fine. When it comes to restoring, you can choose your image files, etc. For cloning, like I said, you can do a disk clone, although it doesn't seem that works. I think that is for the pro version, but you can definitely do the partition clone. And in the tool section, you've got the options to create a bootable disk. So you can actually restore your system using one of your images on your backup drive. And also you can choose notifications and storage management, etc. So if you're maybe backing up to a NAS, you can add new locations. So add share or NAS devices. That is an option. So yeah, import and export, check images, view logs, etc, etc. Anyway, with that said, let's go to the home. So we can create a backup. So let's do a system backup. And that seems the most logical one. So you've got your whole system there, including all of the kind of boot sections. And you just choose that and then choose a backup location. Now for me, you can choose either local path, uh, NAS device or X, which is my USB drive, which I've got plugged in. So at that point then you've got options of, you can actually call it what it is. So we call it system backup. And we'll call it stream because it's for the stream pc and also you can encrypt it if you get the pro version and also you can get an email if you set that up to let you know that the backup is completed which is kind of nice uh, you've got a command option as well and also you've got the advanced section so you can press the disk spaces if you want to you can also split the images if necessary and also operation priority so you set these once and that's kind of it you can then save that to the global settings if you wanted to so that's fine, we can click OK. So if you want to do a system backup, that's how you do it. As you can see, this is gonna be system backup three, because I've already done it a couple of times already. And it's actually pretty quick as well. So I'm not gonna do it now for the sake of this video, because it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes to do the backup, because we've got around about 500 gigs of data on here. So obviously, depending on the speed of your system, that may or may not take longer. But 
also that is able to be scheduled. So if you want to enable it so it does the backup at a certain time, so it's not going to be interrupting you, that's fine. You can do that and you can run it either daily or intervals or that kind of stuff. And also you can tell the system to actually shut down if you want to. So if you're going to do it kind of late at night and let the PC shut down after it's done, that is an option, but that is with the pro version. Also for the advanced section, so uh, you can install a service to run the scheduled tasks to wake up the PC or that kind of stuff. Or you can use the task scheduler if you don't want to do it that way. Choices are yours. So that's pretty much it for system backup. Again, very straightforward. Just it's got your system there. Tell it where it wants to go to. Hit start backup and it will start backing up your system. Pretty straightforward. If we go over to synchronization, so we'll do this actually because this is quite quick. So in the free version, you've only got the basic sync option. So we'll click on that. So all we want to do is choose a folder. So we'll go to my PC, we'll go to the C drive, go to users, go to my user account folder, and we'll say we want to save our videos because that's where our streaming stuff is. Choose that. So that's got our location. We want it to go to the X drive, which is our backup drive. And again, in the options, we've got the same sort of stuff. So you can make a comment on it, email notifications, etc. Uh, you can actually uh, sync the deletions in the source directory as well. You can also verify the integrity of the file should you wish to. Uh, you've got the commands there and also you've got the operation priority. And also you can choose it to automatically create a folder with the same name as the task in the target location. So that kind of makes sense. So we'll do that. So we'll click OK and we'll click on Start Sync. So what it's going to do now is to look at your external drive. It's going to take a snapshot. It uses two versions of snapshotting. So you've got the VSSS, which is built into Windows, and also AMA have actually got their own kind of backup imaging software as well. So you can choose which one you want to do. And there you go. The current operation has been completed. So we'll click on Finish. And then in our home section for backup management, we've then got our basic sync. So if you want to run that ad hoc or whenever you want to, just click on the start button and it will go ahead and do the sync. It will do it as an incremental. So it should take very short time. This is only a small folder anyway. So it should be basically after it's checked the system, it should be over in a flash. And there you go. Very simple, very easy to do. Also, when you've got a backup done. You've got options to synchronize now, restore, schedule, edit the sync, delete it, locate the sync, shortcuts, and also you've got your properties and it tells you all about it, sources, etc. So it's all really nicely laid out. It's actually quite powerful, but in a very simplistic interface. So actually to finish this video off, let's uh, start a backup going. So there is my system backup. We're going to do it anyway. So there is the X drive and also options. We can choose what we want. I'm going to just leave all those as normal backup mode. We we'll use the intelligent sector backup. And also, like I said, you can choose the Microsoft VSSS, which is the kind of shadow system, or you can use their own backup service. I've done both of these and timed it for the same drive. And roughly there's basically nothing in it. It's maybe 30 seconds longer for the Microsoft version. If you pay for the software, the pro version, I do believe that the AMA backup service is increased in speed. So potentially if speed is of concern, then you might want to think about purchasing a license. So anyway, we'll click OK and we'll start the backup. And again, it's going to do the exact same thing as it did before. So it's backing up the volume C drive and going on. If you want to find more information, you can see it there. So it's backing it all up and you've got your processing of data. And there we go, started to go. So even though this is on a USB drive at the moment, it's actually still pretty quick. And I've seen peaks up here, around about sort of 700 megabytes per second, depending on the size of the files. As you can see, it's picking up some speed now. And as it gets towards the larger files, that will increase. Obviously, that's going to be dependent on your USB speeds or your network connectivity. But overall, I think this is actually a, a pretty cool thing to do. And again, if you want to just use the free version like we're doing now, it's still fully functional for doing backups, synchronizations, etc. But you will get a lot more flexibility from the paid versions. So there we go. I'm going to leave that running, let it do its backup. And then once that's done, I'm going to remove the USB drive from the computer. And I'm going to store that somewhere safe because I do know that I've got my systems backed up on my NAS, which is local to my location. 
But you know what it is, you never know what's going to happen, your NAS might die or you might get some kind of storm and electricity fry everything. So taking a USB drive out and actually storing it off site is a really, really good thing to do as part of the kind of 3 2 1 backup strategy. Anyway, if you've got any comments or questions about this video, feel free to let me know in that comments section below. Again, if there is going to be any discounts which I can try and wangle out of this company, then they'll be in the video description as well. So please do check those out. But for now, I think that's going to be it. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.